everybody. Um, we're driving up to Bishop today from LA and I just wanted to, uh, to show you some of it. This is a little bit um, more brown than we've been seeing. We've seen a lot of green in California and it's been really beautiful. We're in the Agua Dulce Canyon right here and it's really actually very breathtaking. I'm sure that this video doesn't really do it justice. Mountains in the distance. Um, Anyway, I wanted to start this video off and talk to you about something I haven't been live in a long time. So I wanted to um, share this with you on this Memorial Day. So I'm gonna flip this around, I think, hang on. Hi, so we're driving, it's Heath and me. Um, and like I said, we're driving up to Bishop, California from LA. And um, what the Lord has been talking to me about, you know, if you've watched any of my Facebook videos, you've known that I broke my leg in February and that I kind of laid off ministering on Facebook for a while and there are quite a few reasons I did but um, the Lord has prompted me this morning excuse me to uh, oh my husband's telling me to show you something hang on beautiful um, so he's been prompting me to, to share something with you and um, and one thing that the Lord told me was to share something that I already have um, received a victory and something that I've already accomplished because if I try to share something that I've just learned or that's just revelation knowledge to me, the devil will try to steal it by attacking me. So so that's one of the reasons I've been, God, I've been going back and forth on what to share and what not to share and when to share and all this. Anyway, first things first, I'm completely healed. Um, I'm walking perfectly in cowboy boots today. You can see, you know, no crutches, no nothing. Um, God completely healed my leg. I'm totally fine, able to do everything that I was able to do before, no complications. So praise God for that. But um, but so the fact that we're in California is definitely from God. Um, when Heath and I got married, we I wanted to come to California so bad. I and that doesn't make any sense, right? Because California is supposed to be very liberal and um, very expensive and all of this, but God had it in my heart to come to California and I didn't, for lots of reasons, I didn't come and I just put it off and put it off. And one of the things after Heath and I got married, I expressed to him my desire to move to California and he was against it completely. And so I submitted to my husband and I submitted to his will for our lives and I told God if he wanted me to move to California he had to talk to my husband about it well a couple years went by and um, even he lost his job twice two very very good jobs and I said you know maybe we should go to California and he said I'm not going to California there's no way I'm not moving out there and um, and so I told God you know you really if you want me to go you're gonna have to talk to him because I'm supposed to submit to my husband those are your rules not mine and, uh, and so all of a sudden, God put it on Heath's heart to start applying for positions in California, which he did and which he received. And so we're out here on a house hunting trip and we're out here on his business. He's doing a little work while he's out here too, while we look for a place to live. And um, we'll be leaving Texas and moving to California shortly. Um, but the point of my Facebook video is not just to catch everybody up, but it's also to let you know um, a little a little insight into marriage that I've learned um, through this whole thing is that in the Garden of Eden, when the fall happened, God said to Eve that her desire would be for her husband, but he would rule over her. And ever since then, this, this curse of Eve has been not only pain and childbirth, but it's been this desire to be more than your husband, to go above what he says, to disrespect him, to do your own thing, to be very hyper-feminist. Now, I'm not against women. I love women. I, I am one, so I have to love them. But I, I love God more, and I think that me submitting to my husband and his will for my life has made me more of a woman, and it's made me more attractive to my husband. It's made me who I am as a woman and so 
that standing up against him and making more money than him and outdoing him in things that that's not that's not bueno I can't that that does not it doesn't complete who I am as a female and so I decided a long time ago that I was going to submit to my husband well so I had God calling me to California on the one hand and then I had on the other hand my husband saying I'm not moving to California so it was in this dichotomy in this fork in my heart that I discovered some things and it wasn't just California it's been this way um, with Heath and me for years that I will believe that God's calling us to do something or that we need to do something and I'll tell Heath about it and he does not have the same revelation and he will dig his heels in and say I'm not doing that we're not doing that I don't see how that can work and so I went to God when this first started happening four years ago I went to God and I said how do I manage this and God showed me um, the story of Mary and Joseph actually and he said I want you to think about this in in today's world now Mary was betrothed to Joseph and, and that means a different thing in Jewish culture here's a really short lesson in Jewish culture ancient Jewish culture uh, mar marriage ceremonies is that when a woman would become betrothed to a man it was the same thing kind of as engagement but with a couple of exceptions number one of course they wouldn't sleep together number two the man would actually go away for a year before their wedding they were technically married but they hadn't come together in other words they hadn't had intercourse and so he would go away for one year and he would build a house and get everything ready to bring his bride to so that they could start a family and while he was gone he would send his best friend to watch his um, wife betrothed woman now that kind of stuff would not fly in today's culture you know that your babies would come out looking like your best friend if you tried to pull that in today's culture and but but that's how they did it in um, ancient Israel so when she when Mary comes up pregnant that's exactly what they thought is that is that Joseph's man his best friend his homie was you know messing around with Mary and then he got her pregnant and that would have been really disgraceful that's why that's why Joseph was minded to put her away because because of that I mean can you imagine how if you left your girlfriend for a year and your best friend's hanging around with her and then all of a sudden she comes up pregnant that's that's very suspicious so what God had to do and how he turned this as a teaching tool in my own uh, marriage was that he he said I had to tell Joseph in other words God had to tell Joseph that the child that Mary was pregnant with wasn't because she was cheating on him but it was a Holy Spirit child and God went straight into Joseph's heart through a dream and told him you can take your wife to you because she's pregnant with the child of the Holy Ghost and when God told me that story I'm sorry it's kind of a bumpy road when God told me that story about Mary and Joseph he said to me Wednesday if there's something I'm calling you to do it's not your place to go to your husband and tell him and force him and convince him and sometimes manipulate him or at least try to manipulate him into getting him to agree with you what the better thing is is to submit yourself to my will like Mary did saying be it unto me Lord as you have spoken it to me and then to ask me to talk to your husband because I'm not gonna call you to do something without Heath because you guys are one so when you are faced with whether you're a husband or a wife typically this comes to the wife but whether you're a husband or a wife, this God showed me that this will, um, it does apply to every person in a marriage situation. When, you, when God calls you to do something and you approach your spouse about it and they don't have the same revelation, they're not there with you, that you submit yourself to the will of God and you say to God, Lord, I am expecting you to talk to my spouse. Okay, so how does that all have to do with this trip to California? Well, he was completely against it. And I prayed because I said, Lord, I want more than anything to fulfill your will for my life. And I want more than anything to do exactly what you've called me to do. And I feel like it's in California, but my husband, I have to submit to him. And so, so God spoke to his heart. He spoke to his heart so much that he has been like a children, I mean, a child on Christmas Eve, a child ready to go to Disneyland, literally. He has been so excited, so beside himself that he has been pushing and 
it's been a wonderful thing to see because when God works in somebody's heart, that there's no denying it. So what I'm telling you is that if you have anything going on in your heart that God is calling you to and your spouse does not share the same revelation yet, you submit yourself to the Lord. Be it unto me as you have spoken it, Father. And you, excuse me, you ask God and you trust God to talk to your spouse so that you don't have to be divided in your marriage. You don't have to be divided in your heart, but you can go on with God and God can bring about the blessing and his will for your life as well as his will for their life. I hope you guys got a lot out of this and I will uh, I'll be posting pictures from, from the rest of our California trip. And remember that I love you and Jesus loves you. You be blessed.